What's your name? Sukhvinder Joel. No. Should I look at you? Look right? here. Or look at the camera. <laughs> what, kind of what kind of organization are you affiliated with? I'm from CAW Canada. And what type of organization, labor organizing have you done? Well, I helped in organizing some units uh, which were predominantly South Asian in the past, but I've been, um, now my job is basically in what we call servicing, so I'm responsible for um, negotiating contracts with employers and dealing with grievances or any issue that may arise in the workplace, so that's my responsibility. And I service about 28 different companies within the state of local confinement. How do you get South Asian community members to be involved in uh, unionizing or involved in organizing? How do we get them involved? Um, <laughs> that's the million dollar question, right? I think it's, um, you know, unless a person feels that they're discriminated or they're not treated fairly in the workplace, they don't think about unions or anything else. But that's really the key. And, most of the people from South Asia, it doesn't matter where they work, they have stories which, uh, if they're actually allowed to tell, they can tell you stories where they're discriminated. Whether it's a promotion in the job posting, whether it's uh, getting the same wages, whether it's favoritism in terms of overtime or whatever, the distribution of overtime, and not being generally treated fairly, they'll have hundreds of stories, right? Once you get them to tell that, then they will be very pro-union. They'll know why the unions exist and what the benefits of the union are. And I think if you can get that story out, then they'll know. Most of the people from South Asia, I have to say, don't really know about the labor movement per se. The labor movement back home, I'm from India originally, is far different than what we have here. So that's really the big, the key is to tell them what the unions do here and what the benefits are and what we've done over the past 50 years. And I think if you can tell that, uh, then they will be, they'll understand what it's about. Do you think that it's, uh, there is resistance because there's a ne negative perception that they have about unions uh, versus what they knew about in their home country versus here? Um, yeah, because I think, as I said, like, I think they bring a different kind of um, understanding of what the labor movement is all about. They don't know what they've done, the labor movement stood for here. They know what they do back home, but they are limited in what actually the labor does back in India or in South Asia or anywhere else, right? So I think once they know what the labor movement actually does or has been successful in doing, I think they will get involved. But unless they do that, you know, they have no perception of what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about the Kamagata Maru incident before? I certainly have, yes. Yeah. So do you think the perception of Canadian society towards immigrants has changed since then? Or like, are we still kind of struggling to move on? Um, well, obviously some things have changed a lot. Others remain the same. But I think in terms of changing, I mean, you know, they don't keep you out the door now the, the way they did with the Kamagata Maru uh, travelers at the time. Now they wear three-piece suits and it's a different type of uh, environment, right? Racism or prejudice is totally it's hidden. They don't tell you because you're brown, we're not going to let you in the country. There are other, um, there are other kind of prohibitive, you know, uh, uh, grounds where they can actually keep you out. Now look what they're doing now, the Harper government, right? They're bringing now temporary foreign workers to do what? Actually to do basically it's a modern day slavery, that's what it's all about. And to, and to keep the unions, uh, the power of the unions under control basically, that's what it's all about. It's creating two tier societies. And I think that's what it's doing. But at the end of the day, um, has have things changed? I think they have, I mean there's no doubt. Uh, you know, a lot, lot has changed, but still, a lot needs to be done. I think that's, that's the key. Why do you think it's important to document the stories and our histories of South Asians in Canada? Like, uh, do you think what we're doing is like a really important thing? Like, and if so, why do you think it's important? Well, I think it's important, I mean, um, from the point of view that uh, South Asians aren't really known to document things very well and, and the thing is it's always stories told from one person to the other 
and they change over time. We haven't been very good at that over centuries. It's always been somebody else telling our stories to someone else. And those stories are always never really the truth. Even the history, it isn't written by us. If you look back thousands of years, it isn't written by us. It's written by those who ruled us over the years, from Britain and whatever else. It's the colonial history that's actually being told from their perspective. We have to have our own stories told by us. And I think that's how you can learn from the past, plus hopefully inspire the future generation, because that's who we exist for. Thank you so much. Thank you.